good evening everyone uh thank you akil uh, for supporting us and uh, we'll move on to the session now i'd like to in invite our speaker today i introduce our speaker today mrs varda pentse um, she has been part of the core team at cerebris since 1997 prior to cerebris she's had 10 years of line hr experience in uh, at colgate palmolive nelco and orson electronics She has managed Cerebris practice in Western India and also leads the leadership development practice. She has worked with a large number of organizations on employee engagement surveys, assessment centers, 360 degree feedback, development of individual development plans and leadership development programs. She has provided individual counseling to over 500 managers across levels. She has also done significant work in culture building and organization transformation. She has worked with several family-owned companies to help them through the journey of professionalizing. Mrs. Varda has also extensive training experience and is well known for her programs in performance management. She has done various training engagements for over fifty companies and is a certified trainer for the DISC instrument, Thomas Profile, and is a certified coach from Franklin Covey. She is also passionate about teaching and has been a faculty member at Wellinger for several years. In addition to this, she holds a bachelor's degree in economics from Bombay University and a master's in management science from NMIMS Mumbai. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Joydi, and thank you, Kredai, for inviting us to share uh, our knowledge on uh, compensation. uh you know i have uh, with me my team members dipika and tanvi um because i've realized in you know i've been working in the corporate world for 30 years and the last two years have actually reset button has been pressed and we are all seeing a lot of change uh, that is happening we are experiencing it so imagine two years back if i was told that i would be addressing an all india level meeting on uh, zoom i perhaps would have not believed it but today i do this on a regular basis uh so the way we structured today's uh, presentation is uh, really looking at how the organization have changed evolved the employment models have changed and therefore the impact that it has on the reward strategy uh, so i'm going to request uh, dipika to speak a bit about the organization design she is a specialist in it uh, even when we work on assignments she is the one who comes up with very creative innovative ideas in terms of how the structure should be and from there we will move on to uh, looking at the reward strategies as they have evolved uh, and tanvi will uh, take it forward from there so i just felt that it is it would be better that if we set the context and thereafter spend uh, another 20 minutes to answer any queries that you would have so over to you dipika thanks for that Uh, so good evening everybody and it's a pleasure to be here speaking with you uh, i'm going to request kreda if we can have the uh, presentation up as well for participants to see right so uh, you know uh, joydeep has already given you a brief introduction about us but i'd also like to spend two more minutes to talk about who we are and what we do Uh, Cerebris Consultants is a more than twenty-five year old firm now. In uh, you know, primarily working in the area of strategic HR advisory and consulting. We are headquartered in Mumbai, but have regional presence throughout the country from Delhi, Bangalore, Chennai, uh, and Pune. And we work largely in the entirety of Indian subcontinent, including Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, and we've done work with other uh, you know geographies as well. Uh, as a part of uh, uh, being the hr uh, strategic hr consulting we work uh, across length and breadth of hr function 
uh, this uh, many of our practice areas uh, are in the area of leadership development, talent management, employee assessments, uh, engagement studies, and 360 degree feedback. We have a strong vertical in reward management area, which is all about design of reward strategy, the reward structure, uh, you know, with designing variable pay plans, looking at long-term incentives, uh, employee stock options, and, you know, those kind of areas. We also have a, a considerable expertise in the area of organization transformation and change management. These are typically really large-scale assignments, which we do, where we handhold an organization through its transformation journey, either to become more professional or to review it and, you know, recast their existing HR uh, ecosystem so that they are able to, you know, get uh, go on to a growth journey for a future uh, target state. Uh, And in that context, we look at all types of areas like HR policies, uh, designing of various HR systems, including performance management systems, uh, reviewing of organization structures, uh, establishing role clarity, drafting job descriptions, and, you know, like the likes of that. Uh, And there are many more areas that we sort of work in, and I wouldn't, you know, spend too much time on that, given the fact we have limited time today. Going into the area of, uh, you know, uh, rewards, I think it is very important that first, as an organization, we decide and we know what is going to be our primary focus. Uh, I'm sure you're able to see the slide in front of you. Uh, I'm at the back end and I don't have a very clear sight to it, actually. So, uh, you know, the first thing is to really look at what is our business focus, right? Uh, what kind of organization are we? And, you know, uh, unless and until we decide what kind of focus as a business we have, because uh, we will not be able to decide how to organize uh, our uh, cells, how do we sort of look at what our HR strategy should be, and therefore resultant, what should be our reward strategy. So it's very important to first determine what is our business focus. And this really comes from the fact of, what kind of market we are in, what kind of uh, clients we have, which are, what is our target base, uh, you know, uh, what is the quality or the type of, cons- you know, uh, into construction space we want to be in. So all of that are going to be a key determined to determine what kind of business models we have. That will in turn uh, lead to us deciding our organization structure. Uh, why is organization structure so important? At the end, organization structure is nothing about how many people are there, at what levels are there, and how we have organized different work areas. It is very critical because this determines how many people we will eventually need to staff the company to run the business, right? And that automatically leads to compensation because there is an employee cost. How we are organized will have a huge bearing on employee cost. And therefore, our reward strategy needs to follow that principle in mind that our organization structure is a key contributor or determining factor of what should be our reward strategy, right? We could be matrix, we could be very, very hierarchical, or we could look at a combination of, you know, a, a, a SBU model, a very project-driven model, uh, all kinds of models. But essentially, all of this sort of... Uh, impact the way we cost the salaries and what it in in the end means for our balance sheet. So uh, organization structure is something that all of you need to keep in mind when you look at what is the salary cost you would like to afford. The next aspect that we must consider is something called as industry norms, which is nothing but what is it that our competition is doing, right? Uh, How do they pay? what kind of unique practices they have, what is the latest trend in the industry, because that really determines uh, so many employment trends in terms of attrition, in terms of hiring, in terms of, you know, uh, uh, anything new which others have started doing and you see it is working well for them. So we would like to do the same, right? So industry and what is happening in the industry is important, not just from the point of view of the practices, but also from the point of view of the salary levels that are typically offered, right? For example, for our junior most staff, which is largely at the sites or largely in execution, uh, are we paying only at minimum wages 
or the industry norm is to pay a little above minimum wages right so what is it that the industry is doing is something we would need to keep in mind as we design our reward strategy the next parameter is cost and the financial concern what kind of cost can i take on salaries uh salaries uh, unfortunately is not all cash you know there are uh, a lot of compliances there are a lot of uh, you know long term locked uh, components like provident fund and gratuity etc and there is a cost to all of that right so uh, when you do annual increments there is an immediate impact on the balance sheet there is an immediate impact on the payout you need to make and that is very important to consider because Uh, what is the hit that i can take how do i decide how what kind of increment i need to be giving uh, how do i decide what kind of uh, you know uh, uh, what kind of salary models i should have uh, is there a taxability benefit i can probably offer to employ um, my employees do i go more on contract employment less on full time employment because there is an impact on the salaries as well on the cost that i take as a concern so what is my liquidity status as an organization what is it that i am able to pro- apo- you know proportion uh, proportionately use for my salaries uh, is going to be an uh, important consideration and this will also have a resultant impact on your structure itself the next aspect is employee uh, expectation especially today in a post covid world uh i think uh, all of you would have seen the entirety of the change in terms of how employee expectations have gone through uh, the roof uh, where earlier it was a very standard it was a lot more structured today their expectations are very different uh, their expectations are a lot more on cash a lot less on what they cannot really see but having said that they also still demand certain benefits especially medical and related benefits uh, you know so what is it that employees today are asking and bear in mind uh, employees expectation is not just going to be dependent on what they see in their own industry they will hear a friend from it industry say something they'll hear a friend from a financial services say something they will read an article in the newspaper and that also becomes their uh, aspiration and in the end that has an impact on what you need to then take a, de- a decision on whether it to what extent can you meet those expectations otherwise it leads to attrition or a certain disgruntlement at various levels so that is a very delicate balance to manage and uh, is an important consideration in looking at the reward strategy and the last part is really the talent challenges we have uh i think post uh, in the last 2 to 3 years uh, everybody has heard the term the great rest uh you know and it really has simply meant that there has been a lot of churn uh there is a high degree of fungibility that is now visible in the sense that people are no more just exiting to go to a competitor they are also resigning to go to different industries and in a way and at a scale which was never done earlier so for us the talent challenges are at a very very different level today because our people uh, where we are losing people to that itself has gone through such a huge change that uh, i can no longer stay immune to what happens in other industries right because that really is either a t- talent donor to me or a talent taker for me and it is therefore very important that all of you whether you know you're in senior leadership positions or whether you're from the hr bear in mind as to where is the talent coming from and where is the talent going to and therefore what are our challenges with regards to talent att- attraction and talent retention uh, salary will always play a critical part in arriving at a solution to that and it is something you need to keep in mind but salary itself is not going to be the only point there are other aspects as well okay moving on to the next uh, you know section is one thing that i'd like to say is uh, today uh, it's very important that we start looking at the workforce and when i say workforce i don't just mean people at the you know execution level 
uh, it is very important to see the our entire available talent base our, our entire available employee base to identify differentiation amongst them i'll give you a simple example uh, earlier we could give a, we could use a standard method a standard scale and a standard formula to sort of give salaries today it doesn't work uh, considerations like specialization uh, scarcity of a certain type of skill uh, uh, you know uh, these are key drivers of how you may want to pay differently to different types of people right so for example there may be some really critical roles and they impact your whole value chain in a significant manner and you will have no option but to pay them at a slightly or maybe significantly higher level than a lot of other people who are at similar band or a designation because you know that this is a prized skill or a very niche skill area uh, look at how technology has changed uh, the construction uh, sector today in a way traditional style of uh, you know we were working earlier the people who worked at a certain level worked in a certain style uh, worked in a certain manner uh, using a tr the traditional methods or the more established methods of the time did well but the moment technology got introduced to that area from the way you do the designing to the way you do your project execution suddenly the people with exposure to that technology started demanding a premium in the market and that's something that we all need to be aware of today in a post covid environment that differentiation of skills has itself become a key driver in determining how will my salary or my compensation be structured how should my compensation strategy be because we cannot pay people at by, with the same uh, you know in the same level anymore we have to be able to identify for ourselves that in my company what are my core skills what are my specialist skills or specialist roles and what are the flexible uh, you know jobs where uh, i can afford to take a little bit of a leave maybe i can outsource something maybe i can look at different type of employment models and that will be a key determinant to see how should i structure my compensation differently for different types of jobs in the organization a very classic example is uh, you know sales versus the uh, execution right often sales people get incentive the execution team doesn't get the incentive so uh, you know on a similar line it's also about the type of employees we have uh, today we talk about on site employees these are your core roles right uh, and they covid has not really impacted them much you know i mean whenever when uh, as things started progressing back to normal these core roles went back to doing what they were doing where they were doing what has however become a, a new emergent workforce is the virtual workforce uh, these are remote working employees while we all struggled in different manners to you know get, at least in the starting phase how do we start the online working how do we remain connected how do we review how do we track i think today it has become like the it's it's become a norm it's become a standard practice and today a lot of companies are making a lot of conscious choice as to what kind of roles we are happy to keep remote because it has an impact on my infrastructure cost and a lot of other things as well uh, even in the construction industry i think it is important to identify today which are some of these roles where a virtual employment model may may work to our advantage and benefit and how do we leverage it right the next piece is like a gig worker a gig worker is nothing but a, a type of worker who's an as on assignment short duration kind of a worker uh, when i say worker it is not necessarily the junior most person it is really the employee uh, somebody who's freelancing and for depending upon the need you have you may call on them to help you out and then once the project or the task is done they go out today the economy is flooded with gig workers who seek to expand their skills and their special uh, specialization across a plethora of industries in the area they work uh, largely in the areas of you know design uh, technology uh, some of the consulting areas 
you see a lot of people working in gig space and they are also becoming an emerging and important consideration in the employment models companies choose and the last piece is the hybrid environment or the hybrid worker this is really about partly here partly there or a combination of uh, you know uh, some of these employment contracts and uh, today more and more employees are demanding this uh, especially in the support function especially in the, some of our more specialized corporate functions as well and uh, the only way to perhaps deal with it is to actually look at having a policy look at having how do we make it possible and clearly laying out terms and conditions around it depending upon the type of employment contract people will have with you that will also have a bearing on the salary uh, strat- the strategy you will adopt for compensation and benefits uh, and you know so these are some of the areas overall that i believe it is important that all of you should consider and think about as you plan for the compensation strategy and with this i'd now like to invite my colleague tanvi to take over as she takes you through more in detail about the uh, compensation structure and uh, the strategies you could possibly adopt thank you hello everyone so see we all understand that a reward or compensation as a whole is a very important uh, subject it of course makes a major chunk of the hr cost it it uh, you know we run a lot of analysis on it we, we track employee cost as a percentage of sales turnover we record you know um, what is the average cost per employee we look at a lot of these aspects but uh, today i want uh, us to focus on three uh, very important aspects that you know we must take into account when when we are looking at our compensation that is total remuneration ctc and the take home salary and no contrary to what most of us may believe it's not the same uh, so when we say total remuneration um, it is the entire package the entire package including your fixed cash your short term incentives your retirees valued benefits any el tips that you might give out uh that that is a total remuneration that the employee is receiving but the entire thing doesn't go out in in one year so you know the the long term incentives might be given out at the end of a period which might be 3 years 5 years whatever the uh, set out period is so on a yearly basis we give out a ctc which will have uh the fixed cash the short term incentives retirees and valued benefits now as we realize that the retirees and valued benefits are non cost uh, non cash elements so uh, that is not something that the employee gets in cash right so what is what we are left with is the gross salary the gross salary is the cash salary or so to say from this we have to of course deduct the tax so we are left with then the net salary which is a chunk of the cost of, of the gross salary without the tax from that there are deductions you know towards professional tax uh, which leaves the employee with the take home salary so this differentiation from this total remuneration to ctc to the take home salary is a very important element that we need to keep in mind because we have to understand that the employee aspirations today are changing uh, you know some people are demanding more cash uh, they are seeing a you know a, a increased uh, so tanvi if i could interrupt i think uh, at one level employee looks at it from a cash perspective but from an employer perspective we look at it at a total rem perspective right and the pressure on companies is that how do you balance the two right that and uh, i think fundamentally uh, the one conclusion i have is that it's very important to communicate to the employee that what is the total ctc or total rem he is getting and therefore what is his take home because that ctc is really the cost to the company and many a times uh, elements like uh provident fund or the valued benefits which we are providing we forget to in cash it and communicate it to the employee can we if you could move ahead that would be nice we have listed out in this slide some of the reward dilemmas that you know uh, you may also face and uh, please please feel free to add on if, if you have any more one of course in a large one is you know um, emphasis on whether we should have a, a, a fixed payout or a variable salary and how much should the proportion be how much should our fixed to variable proportion be should it uh, um, 
the second one is cash versus benefit so uh, tanvi i'll stop at every point okay yes, yes. so you know the fundamental issue is that um, do i give everything fixed or do i have to have a variable and um, it is very important that the variable performance pay is given to employees because it is a lot about recognizing the effort that the employee is taking as well as it is also about uh, creating pressure for the employee that he needs to uh, earn the additional money that uh, he can earn by performance so later on uh, we have detailed out the aspect of uh, variable pay and what we have found now is increasingly the comp- you know the way you approach the variable pay or performance pay has changed at a junior level you may tend not to give performance pay but definitely at the middle and senior level variable pay is a very important component so th- this is a constant struggle fixed versus variable but doing a you know we must have variable pay as a salary component for the middle and the senior level because these are critical roles that make a difference to the organization then we all yours the next one is on cash versus benefits so should how much of our salary should go out in cash what is the proportion of benefits that we must give out does does that depend on the um, on the uh, the gen z versus the baby boomers should you form should you use a different strategy for both um that does it also depend upon the the level or or, or the uh, place of an organ of an employee in the organization like we do a lot of these uh, you know benchmarking studies across sectors across uh, uh, geographies and of late especially in the in the uh, shop floor employee category what we are uh, you know overly and overwhelmingly observing is that um, most of the increases that they are asking for are are on cash basis uh, uh, which is true of you know a lot of the uh, junior level or uh, individual contributor level employees there are a lot of the uh, they are much happier if the increases you are giving out are in cash and it's, it's an increasing trend that we are observing as well that you know benefits are are a part of the structure but but the the negotiating factor now becomes becomes the cash elements um of course that changes based on you know what what is your demographic what is the age group what is uh, what is the level or uh, cadre of the employee of course another element is you know um how, what sort of a compensation structure should we have should we have a fixed structure should we have a flexi structure where we give employees the Uh, the flexibility to be able to choose what sort of uh, elements that they want to include in, as a part of their pay slip um the next one would be you know um premium for special skills so dipika touched upon this topic briefly but it becomes a major dilemma for most reward professionals that you know uh, should we be uh, focusing on maintaining an internal parity which is to say that you know paying a certain level across grades across roles or should we be paying a, a premium to certain skills or certain job families um and if we do then what is the extent of of the skew or of the change that that is acceptable um the next one of course is something that we are observing very widely now is is the frequency of salary change so what we saw uh, what we saw previously was that you know saal mein ek baar increment hota hai ya to april mein ya jan mein depending on your cycle but um of late there is uh, there is an increasing um increasing pattern where you know mid year increases are rolled out ad hoc increases are rolled out sometimes as a as a strategy to retain employees uh, uh, that that you might you know uh, fear losing that overnight increases are rolled out and 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 should we should we adopt that as as a philosophy as a practice or sh- or uh, do away with it is is also a dilemma that you know uh, a lot of times comes up the last one of course and that becomes even more uh, apparent in the wake of the pandemic is wellness versus cash in hand so should we be focusing on wellness uh, initiatives should we be spending a lot of uh, time effort and of course funds in you know ensuring uh, some sort of wellness is in place in terms of health camps in terms of uh, medical insurances in terms of ensuring uh, sanitization and cleanliness and you know uh, those sort of initiatives or or should or you know if employee aspiration is towards cash should i should i be diverting my funds towards providing increases in cash 
that is one more of the dilemma that that you know we've observed very often ma'am if you'd like to add anything yeah so if you really look at it these are dilemmas but we do find uh, you know a trend towards performance pay being there and uh, the uh, the kind of schemes that are coming up under a variable pay uh, is very interesting uh, you know because you have multi generation and employee uh, as uh, expecting different things we are seeing in, in increasing trend towards in cashing benefits which is you know you either take it in cash or you take it as benefit uh, thanks to wage code i think which is going to be covered later uh, during the week for you the uh, structural element uh, you know in terms of flexibility is reduced and the defined elements have uh, gone up uh you know as dipika really spoke about the skill job differential i think uh, in the next couple of years even the employment contract differential will come up in the compensation level so if you are working from home in a remote site and not coming to office probably your salary levels will be a little lower uh certain specific skills so increasingly by skills uh and talent availability the uh, compensation differential is happening and uh, you know if you really look at in the real estate industry what we find for example the sales roles have a much higher mix of uh, fixed versus variable as compared to construction but uh, in construction again tanvi covers it later project incentives have come in or a milestone driven incentive so a lot of changes are happening there is many struggles in terms of how do we define the various elements and define the reward strategy and we all use so uh, so you know when we are talking about compensation structure some trends that you know we have uh, seen of course uh, the first one we touched based on is is in the last decade there's been a very clear focus on on cash elements the increases have have been on the cash elements i think uh, in the wake of covid a lot of uh, benefit and wellness aspects were already incorporated as as a part of uh, the um, employee model so uh, that that is something which is now taken for granted and most companies most organizations today you know in, in india have reached a certain level of maturity where it come when it comes to benefits and wellness factors so now in today's time whatever further negotiations or further increases are happening have been happening on the cash front in fact a lot of times um, employees are demanding that certain benefits like you know companies used to give out loans earlier so they are now demanding that you know we will take it from a bank we get decent interest rates if we can encash this benefit out you can add it as a cash element in my ctc earlier car was a very important benefit which was given out so there a lot of company you know employees will say that you know we have our own vehicle in fact multiple of them sometimes so we don't really want a physical car you can encash the benefit this this increasing focus on cash and cash being the king is 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 a trend which is coming up over the last decade and and quite starkly so um uh, the next trend is that you know the the compensation structure has become extremely simple so uh, of course um, uh, vada ma'am can add more to this but from what i hear is that you know a decade or or a decade and a half ago there used to be some 20 30 line items in a pay slip uh versus today uh, you know it's it's very simple it's left about four or five uh, key elements it it makes administrative uh, administratively it makes the job much easier and a key element is that our tax regimes have not left too much element, you know too much scope for tax saving on on compensation elements so that there, there no longer remains an incentive to keep so many of them so uh, today's uh, compensation structures are much simpler um, with very few or limited reimbursements and allowances so the cash component meaning actual physical cash component has significantly meaning it's actually dropped down except for maybe in the real estate and family owned companies we do some see some element of cash payment doing being done at the senior level uh, so yes we um, now variable pays and incentive plans 
these are uh, now an integral part of every company's or most companies' organization structure. So we see them that they are very rampant. A lot of the companies are using uh, this sort of uh, uh, element in their CTC. Uh, now, why? What is the reason for, of course, using some a variable pay plan or an incentive plan, and why does it become so important? Uh, the most stark el element, of course, is the fact that if you can deal with the volatility of business because the payment is not fixed in nature and in a certain year when we are not doing as well, we don't have to pay it out. That is, of course, the stark element of it. But there are several softer nuances. Things like, you know, you can, uh, you can associate your variable pay with certain sort of performance milestones, with certain sort of behaviors, with certain sort of um, achievement orientation um, to drive your employees towards a certain goal or a target. So, for example, if I feel that team management or team accountability is a problem for my, is a part of my cultural fabric, introducing a team incentive it goes a long way in making sure that everybody works as a team and, you know, achieves the team goal collectively. Uh, another aspect is, of course, if you're wanting to build a performance culture in the organization. Because, uh, you know, rewarding individual performance, of course, makes the employees feel that, that you know, all their hard work, all their uh, achievements are, are, going, uh, are not going unnoticed. They are being noticed, they are being recorded, and they are being rewarded. There is a structured manner in which, you know, somebody is uh, recording and, you know, keeping track of what are somebody's endeavors, achievements, and pursuits that they're, you know, working very hard towards. So that drives a performance culture in the organization. And of course, you know, yeah, so I just want to add something here. See, in the real estate industry, uh, we've seen very well developed sales incentive plans for the sales team. But for the rest of the organization, which is in terms of the construction team, or the architecture planning team, or the automation team, uh, we've not seen really uh, very well developed uh, variable performance incentive plans. Second is uh, most companies, even the larger ones, don't focus on long term incentives or ESOP or equity. The, everything is on annualized basis on cash. Uh, but in the recent past, we are seeing a change which is happening. Uh, where ESOP equity, you know, with one uh, major company having a successful launch, uh, ESOPs are being given and uh, there are discussion in the larger companies of even giving uh, shadow ESOPs. So it is one way of retaining senior talent as well as creating wealth uh, for that senior talent. So that is one big shift which is happening. The second big shift which is happening is rewarding a team for its performance, uh, you know, which is about a project milestone uh, achievement award, which is there, but very well-defined measurement criteria which are there and that uh, recognition is given. Uh, the third elements, again, uh, real estate sector has been, you know, 90% family owned, but some of the corporates who have entered, they have picked up some of their corporate practices of recognition and providing special rewards for uh, contribution being made. And these are institutionalized, meaning there is a policy towards it, there is a framework towards it. Uh, so, some of the organizations which come with a background of a corporate, uh, this thing, are making a big difference in the way the variable pay and incentive will be looked at in the real estate sector. So, that, you know, I, I, uh, we are envisaging change there. Uh, in terms of compensation levels, I think the big change will be that there will be job family-wise uh, salaries that will be paid. Structure is not going to change much, but the biggest change will be in the mix and the way we are paying out the performance pay, variable pay, and new uh, uh, programs or uh, initiatives getting designed in this area. So. Um Another important element of any compensation structure is the benefits. 
So we are looking at, uh, you know, we've categorized these benefits and we see that four, four uh, major categories emerge out of it. Of course, one is the retirement benefits. Some of them are statutory. There's PF, there is gratuity, there is... Uh, and then there are some which are uh, voluntary in nature. So, like Tanya, yeah. so I think we should speak about NPS because we are again seeing a lot of people uh, going for NPS, the National Pension Scheme. And the National Pension Scheme is uh, for the individual corp corporate agnostic. It is a saving plan. And uh, again, uh, we are seeing the corporate uh, real estate companies opting for an NPS for their employees. So provident fund and gratuity is basically very statutory and uh, we need to all follow it. But there is a shift that is happening here. Uh, car and related benefit, as Tanvi said, uh, you know, it is incashable and uh, it is not uh, too much uh, looked into. But medical insurance, we have seen a big shift happening there and it is a very critical uh, element of uh, the benefit that you are providing to your employee. And I'm going to ask Tanvi to speak on the larger basket of leave, child care, because we are seeing a big shift happening in the overall general industry. And I think uh, the real estate is also having to do some pieces there. Right. So, you know, some of the other benefits that, that sort of are a turning point uh, in employee experience are benefits such as loans, which, which of course, off late companies are, are choosing to end cash. But, uh, you know, uh, loans or emergency uh, advances are, are one aspect, providing some sort of an interest subsidy on them, uh, if, if not a loan. Uh, then there are leaves, and especially now with quarantine, with, uh, uh, with lockdowns, uh, leaves has become a very important aspect. And, you know, whether we can sort of add COVID leave to, to our benefit plan, not, not make it a part of PL, has been a major uh, benefit that most companies have rolled out uh, in, good, in good faith. So, uh, we are running uh, short right. time. So, can we just go to the world at work model? I think when we are now talking about compensation, this is a model developed by World at Work. And it's very important to start looking at compensation from just not money and take home salary, but also to communicate the wellness programs, the benefits. Uh, uh, provided the development initiatives that are given and the recognition that is giving. So the entire your total reward strategy, you need to make it holistic. Uh, many a time when you are working in a family owned smaller uh, organization, your opportunity to do multiple things, your opportunity to build skills in multiple areas is much stronger than if you work in a very large real estate uh, firm. Your ability to communicate that and position that is a very, very important integral element of the reward strategy. Just don't focus in the communication on what is your take-home salary, but focus on what else as an organization you provide which could also include the kind of workforce experience which is there. And yes, if you are part of an organization which is growing very fast, it is always uh, very beneficial. So I'm going to sum up uh, with our last slide, which is that uh, over the years, and especially in the last two years, what we've learned is the business and the business financials are very important. Uh, before looking at the nuts and bolts, which is the take-home salary and provident fund deduction and basics, try and look at the larger picture and look at what is it that as an organization I'm providing and giving to the employee. Learn from other sectors. We tend to say, okay, agle real estate company mein kya hota hai, kaise hota hai. What we are finding is many of the larger real estate companies have actually worked with hiring talent which need not be from the real estate uh, sector. So 
just don't think in isolation look holistically and look at where you can hire talent from what kind of strategies you can adopt uh, in terms of solving your talent uh, management issues because you know the talent availability talent uh, attraction retention and compensation in a certain way is today completely integrated and one cannot look at it without the other i think our last statement is one size doesn't fit all solutions you need to think in a manner where you look at a group of families and a job families and target audience and see what is the best solution you can provide to them so with that uh, thank you so much for allowing us to share your uh, you know share our thoughts we are happy to answer any questions that you may have you can stop sharing and and we have a few questions for you and your team uh, deepika and tanvi uh, the first question is you know legacy employees uh, tend generally tend to be on lower packages Mm -hmm. compared to newer hires how do we overcome this challenge and uh, more importantly overcome the friction between the two we all have bands in which we set salaries but sometimes mm -hmm. it exceeds those bands as well so you know where legacy employees are concerned um, it's very important to see uh, what is the role that the employee is playing if you know you have promoted a person to manager planning but he is still uh, the planning ex playing the role of a planning executive right and he is not taking charge of the complete site he is taking charge of you know i'm just remembering somebody uh, whom i had met uh, some time back and this was a dilemma that he was operating at a site executive planning level and he was designated planning manager because he was with the firm for 20 years right so usko bura lagta hai varda madam isliye usko promote kar diya so i said agar promote kar diya and you are hiring a planning manager from outside at 20 lakhs and you are paying him 8 lakhs there is a difference right and this is the this is a real life case but you know just because he's titled manager planning you should not increase his salary to what a manager planning uh, you are bought from outside who is at 20 lakhs so it's important to have a conversation with the employee in terms of the role that he is playing so that's the first issue now let's assume the legacy employee and the new employee is playing the same role there is a difference of 10 20% then you have to pay the legacy employee the salary what you are paying to the uh, new hire so in compensation today there is a need to do data analytics more than anything else it's no longer about compensation structure it is about fairness it's about role it is about the talent that you have and ma'am you touched upon um, briefly about you know uh, incentivizing the entire organization apart from typically the sales uh, uh, function that we have is there some method in which you can do it practical examples kpi linked or how do we go about doing it if you could just touch upon so the it. simplest one is which is performance kra linked right which uh, many companies have which is based on your kra performance and based on the rating that you get you will get a certain percentage of your salary as performance pay right that's the simplest joy bit but uh, what i i am finding is that uh, you know uh, it is now increasingly project milestone driven for certain job families so uh, uh, because you want to strengthen the planning and the execution process and uh, you know the last two years i think it's uh, at one level the construction happened speedily but at another level sales didn't happen the real estate was really badly hit 
so uh, what we are finding is that uh, project milestone driven or team bonuses are becoming increasingly common and uh, you know the architecture team gets it differently the uh, support team gets it differently the junior team gets it differently meaning i have worked with couple of the large ones and they have really made it into multiple scheme level kind of uh, performance pay and how about enabling functions ma'am how do you uh, incentivize them because they tend to uh, they, they will good. have it as a percentage of their fixed salary and uh, a, and at a junior level most of them are not giving at the junior level at the individual contributor level most are not giving it's all it's the nominal 8 10% and is there any uh, structure where the individual and the team as a whole is incentivized uh, do we see that happening more uh, yeah, we are people? seeing that happening so uh, i'm talking about a live case where a uh, large project last site and uh, based on each slab the team was incentivized so there was a six monthly review which was happening so uh, if the team member was rated 1 they were not eligible for it but 2 3 4 5 as a team they got a certain amount as a percentage of their fixed salary and they gave it every 6 months well, uh, you know when i was reading uh, out your profile uh, and your introduction to everybody uh, you know you also are into culture building and organization building how much of a difference does uh, or how much of an importance does a culture of an organization play in retaining the employee apart from compensation is it a culture plays the biggest role right. if you have strong leaders and you have a you know a culture which appeals to people they stay with you you know and they may they may be willing to work with you even if you are they are paid 10 to 20% or 30% less so you know i many a time uh, you all are all young people i say this that when i see some of the very senior entrepreneurs right who are 60 70 plus right their ability to retain their uh, talent was lot better than some of the younger ones because they spoke to people as individuals sorry jaydi but i do see in, in many organizations that you know uh, the father is a little traditional or the you know he is a little traditional uh, person but his ability to retain people beta beta karke sabse bahut kaam karwa lete hain hai na so somewhere when the younger generation comes in they tend to become professional and that professionalization mein wo relationship chala jata hai and then you know then the market competitive salary uh, gets it in fact i'd like to add here primarily in the real estate this is a very common phenomenon because many of these small in the mid uh, size uh, you know or companies in real estate are family driven so you see so many instances of uh, you know loyalty being a key driver for employee retention and how the relationships have been nurtured yes there is compensation and rewards that goes with it but those are not the primary criteria for uh, you know retention or growth you know uh, and loyalty so i don't want to take the name of a person dipika and i know about him he used to be able to retain the best of talents and the only thing was he used to call everybody beta and he had the best of real estate talent working for him and you know when we went and made a proposal ki boss you have to increase the salary he said nahi zarurat nahi hai ye mere liye kaam karenge one last question ma'am yes. uh, you know when we are doing our uh, hr budget for the year typically we set a base year and then we do a budget both in terms of resources and uh, compensation what are f- the few factors that we have to keep in mind uh, going forward as uh, you know post covid 
uh, you yeah, I think Deepika spoke about the great resignation and then the whole work workplace and the conditions have changed. So in the future, you, what is the criteria that, uh, you know, that one should keep in mind when while doing these budgets? Deepika, you want to give a this on this? HR budget is something which you've been working on. Yes. I think uh, when it comes to planning the HR budget, you have to sort of keep in mind the elements of uh, one is what is going to be your targeted employee cost. Uh, given, keep in mind the business growth plan, the scale up plan, the external environment factors that may affect or impact. Keep in mind how the industry is paying salaries and what therefore could be possible challenges that may come up for you in the next three months from now. With that in mind, build your budget of salary cost, not just keeping in mind what you pay, but also what your cost has benefits or the not visible part of compensation. Uh, do you want to do something more in the uh, area of employee welfare or wellness or, uh, you know, uh, other initiatives that will be re required for retention for you? Uh, do you want to introduce a variable pay scheme? Keep these initiatives and plans in mind. Cost it out at different levels. Are you planning to hire at a certain level? Are you doing going to introduce or some new roles or new area of business which you need to staff differently? Even if you don't yet have a team in place, budget for it. Budget the salaries at multiple levels. And that will help you build an HR budget. On top of it, take a little stretch to account for any challenges or issues that may come up later in the future is my suggestion at the moment. So Jaydeep, I find often no, uh, the reason why she talked about a stretch is we have not predicted our attrition. So actually what we are finding is that when you have uh, a somebody exit, right? He is actually, and you hire someone, you are paying for 15 months instead of 12 months. Because by the time the person starts running and doing his job, two to three months are over. And uh, so the exit uh, impact, cost of exit and cost of uh, exit is something which we need to look at. Cost of wellness and uh, 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 you know, creating an environment and experience for the employee is again a cost which we don't budget. So HR conducts so many events, right? The engagement events, but we are budgeting it only from a cost of activity. So it's important that the HR budget also, the third element of HR budget is what is it as a percentage of revenue? Uh, so, you know, if you were to look at employee cost development uh, cost, you know, so is your HR budget also looking into future? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. I think uh, we're uh, uh, um, our time's up for the session. Right. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you a lot for joining us. Thank you, Deepika. Thank you, Tanvi, for sharing your thoughts. We all thoroughly enjoyed this session and, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, takeaways and I'm sure a lot of us will be implementing some of the things that you, uh, uh, you know, uh, very kindly explained to all of us today.